Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I are with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. What do we have going on today, guys? Hey, John, good to see you again. Hi, you guys. I wanted to uh, ask you about an article uh, that you wrote for Forbes magazine. Um, you're a regular contributor at Forbes. Uh, besides writing books and besides being the, you know, uh, publishing your newsletter weekly, the virtual gourmet, um, you do a lot of articles and magazine articles. And this article that I read just recently was your response. Now, I don't know if I can explain this well to the viewers, but it was your response to an article written by the food critic for the New York Times about the end of beef. <laughs> and what I loved about your article is I didn't have to read her article. You went through her argument and the hit and her history of beef and, and human beings eating meat. And then you answered her. And I just, I loved, I loved not only your answer cause I'm a meat eater, <laughs> But I loved the fact that you were um, you took the time and the and they gave you the space to repeat her argument, so that when you counteract it or or counter it, I understand what you're saying. It, 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 I, I don't, I'm not sure I expressed myself well, but it was a great article. Tell me what it, it, what made you do that. Well, the title of the article, as you said, is just flat out the end of beef, not the end of beef question mark, or is this the end of beef question mark? Um, it was written by, and I think she's the best writer at the food section of the New York Times, uh, Lagaya Misha, and she's really, really good. And as far as I know, when I read her review, she eats meat, so she may now be a vegetarian or a vegan, but uh, it, it doesn't matter to the meat of the story, so to speak. Um, and I have no truck with vegetarians who choose to be vegetarians for their own health reasons. Vegans are another story because they're very proselytizing, um, calling people names, haranguing people, and so forth. So uh, Lagaya Mishan, uh, she aims somewhere in the middle to show at this point in history and going back in history, should we, is there really any need to eat meat anymore? Shouldn't we just not uh, eat so much of it, which she says is just 25% of Americans have cut back on meat uh, or our consumption is down, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and she presents a lot of facts and starts with a lot of history. And <clears throat> I counted it because I respect her, not uh, as a jeremiad against what she was proposing, but she doesn't come out in the end and say, Everybody out there reading this audio, you better stop eating meat and become a vegetarian. No, she doesn't do that, but she's, she's making suggestions. So what I did in my article was to go back historically, because I've researched this for decades and decades, and I've written a book uh, on gluttony. And what you find is that when you're talking about hominids, homo sapiens, human beings, which we only go back a hundred, couple of hundred thousand years in that regard. You know, there was Neanderthal man, there was Cro-Magnon man, that we did eat and were principally carnivores at first. That's what we were. We were just like apes, which are apes. Some apes eat, of course, uh, plant food and so forth. And we learned to eat plant food as gatherers. So we were hunters and gatherers. And man could not have lived without both of those things because farming, agriculture only comes in only 30,000 years ago, uh, 50,000 years ago tops when anybody said, you know, why pick this stuff off a tree? Why don't we stick it in the ground and grow our own? Uh, and that freed up a lot of people from having to go out with a bow and arrow or spear and hunt down a diminishing number of animals within your small territory. If you're, you know, let's face it, if you're a tribe, <clears throat> let's say 50 tribes people, and you're dependent upon meat, and sometimes the the, the, the ibises or the antelope uh, have moved on, uh, it could be a pretty stiff winter. Um, 
And that's how man learned to cons conserve meat by salting it, by freezing it, by brining it, and so forth. But meat has always been part of men's diet, man's diet. Turn to um, ancient history, the, the Bible, okay? In the Bible, God does, Lord, the Lord does say to Adam and Eve, you can eat anything in this garden but the animals. But then immediately in the next chapter, he says that you have to offer me burnt offerings of the best meat out there. You kill, you kill a lamb, you kill, or kill a sheep, and I get the fattiest portion, which you put on an altar and burn, and the aroma goes up to heaven. So he kind of God con kind of contradicts himself right away. And throughout the entire Bible, this whole thing about burnt offerings is extremely, extremely important, and the rules for it are very, very strict. So the Jews and the Israelites never stop eating meat at all. Uh, they ate grain. Remember in uh, Joseph in Egypt, uh, put, put grain in the storage uh, storage bins because God has to lean, lean seven years. So it still exists. It's never been a question of one or the other. Look in the New Testament. What does Christ say? He's at the, Old He's at the um, Last Supper, and he takes a piece of bread and wine, and he dips it in the wine, and he says, eat of this, for this is my body and blood. Now, he didn't have to say that. He could just say, dip in the thing, and he says, eat this bread. This is symbolic of me. You are absorbing me. Now, he said, this is my body and blood. And as good Catholics like John Coleman know, we were told that there is no difference between true body and blood than this little wafer that we are getting in our mouths, so much so that there are mortal sins attached to in any way desecrating this, this wafer. That is being changed into body and blood. So right there is Christ's um, uh, uh, saying that body and blood is essential to your living both the normal and the spiritual life. So as you go through history, um, men have always been uh, dependent upon meat. Um, vegetarianism is usually a religious decision. Now, Buddhists, Buddhists, most Buddhists, especially in, in India, are vegetarians. But Hindus are not vegetarians. They eat, they do not eat beef, it is true, because the cow is sacred, but they eat um, lamb and they eat uh, fish and everything else. Muslims do not eat pork, but they eat beef and lamb and, and everything else. So religion guides a, a great deal of this. In the Middle Ages, um, fasts from fasting from meat was only one day a week on Friday or on special feast days. But that was to to make the body, to mortify the body. Oh, I can't have meat today. I can't have a burger on Friday. So I'm going to be a really good boy, as we were taught by the Irish Christian brothers. And on Friday, rather than commit a mortal sin by letting a hamburger uh, touch our lips, um, we would eat, um, but we could eat fish, okay, fish on Friday. Uh, so we were eating flesh, you know, all of these years. Um, take Japan. Japan did not even have rice to eat until about 800 years ago, Eight, uh, 800 BC. I mean, that's a relatively short time ago. Because they weren't raising anything. So they had to depend on game and a lot of fish in Japan. So along comes this emperor who was a, a Buddhist. He says, no more eating meat, which was not a big deal because they didn't have much meat to eat. And in the 19th century, another emperor named Meiji said, if we want to be strong like Western countries, we got to eat meat. And he commanded everybody in his kingdom, in his em empire, to uh, eat meat. So, you know, it's, it's a slippery slope if you're going to point to history saying that there are times of fasting and times when people turn to vegetables exclusively and grain. And um, it's, it's, a, it's very difficult to say that historically we should stop eating beef or any other meat. The other point that Lagaya Michan makes uh, is about diet. Well, being a vegetarian is healthier for you. There are certain stats that say you will long live longer as a vegetarian. And I want Art to get into this because he used to be a vegetarian. Now, there is there are some studies that suggest you may live a couple of more years longer, on average, on average, than other Americans. They don't have, I don't know what they say about Europeans or, or, or Asians, but you may live a few more years. But most scientists say the type of person who becomes a vegetarian is also likely not to drink much alcohol, 
to be less stre- to be more stress free in their lives, to be married, <laughs> which is a little stressful sometimes, and to have a better lifestyle and to get more exercise. And all of those things put together suggest they may live a little longer. It ain't just the string beans, pal. And Art, you want to jump in on that? Uh, sure. So first of all, I want to congratulate you uh, for the way in which you always approach uh, uh, these issues, um, uh, really with rancor, but with fact. And uh, I thought it was a very respectful piece. And while I haven't read her original piece, I almost don't have to because you've uh, laid it out, I think, quite well. I'm a, a, a vegan uh, for health reasons by choice. My book, uh, my Bible is The China Study, which I recommend to uh, anybody who really wants to understand sort of the background of it all and why people would tend to live uh, longer uh, and healthier uh, with a uh, vegan lifestyle. Uh, but uh, vegan isn't the whole thing. And, and I think you rightfully point out that there are certain people who are vegan who are uh, just uh, so political. And I also don't believe nor recommend to the world to stop eating uh, beef because uh, while there are, I think, a lot of positive effects of that for both the environment and everything else, uh, your approach, I think, is the right one, which is people have always uh, eaten beef, uh, probably always will. And um, it's a, it's a, what, what you do, do it because it's right for you. Uh, and um, uh, I, I, I appreciate your point of view on it. And um, bon appetit. Well, you know, I, I end the article uh, by quoting the great Chris Rock, who said, uh, <laughs> said that uh, you know, everybody in the world really does want to eat meat. And you hear people, oh, I haven't had meat in three days, and we're poor, and so forth. And he makes a very good point, um, especially coming out of black neighborhoods and so forth, where the diet is not so terrific all the time. And he says, what is this eat green stuff? What what is this don't eat meat? He says, if you're fortunate enough to be able to eat a steak, eat the shit out of it. (laughs) Well, you, you can't. You can't do better than a quote from Chris Rock. Uh, on the other hand, you've made me hungry just talking about this stuff. I think I'm going to have a nice corned beef sandwich today. Good idea. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.